of the many important issues we're going to be talking about this morning, one of them is the Millennium Development Goals and the Sustainable Development Goals. And one of the issues that we're going to be talking about with that is that the MDGs come to an end with a lot of really good regional progress that's reflected in PAHO's regional report. The new UN, UN Sustainable Development Framework renews the agreement of all nations to a better world by 2030. One of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals is on health, and PAHO's member states and, and secretary has, uh, has contributed to shape it and make it a standalone stand goal. Here with us today to talk about that is uh, Luis Agosto Galvao, who is the Chief of Special Program Sustainable Development and Equity Health for PAHO. Welcome. Thank Good you job. very much, Derek. So, welcome. For, thank you very much. And uh, I want to say hello for all this uh, uh, audience. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. So, t so tell me, uh, we, we refer to uh, Luis Galvao as Guto here. So just so you know, um, what is the status of the MDGs? And what is PAHO doing to celebrate the results? So this, uh, the, we have very good news in terms of MDGs in this region. So actually, we made a tremendous progress in, in all the MDGs related to health and also in the others that uh, somehow interfere with the, uh, with the health MDGs. But uh, there are some challenges. So there are uh, the challenge of maternal mortality. That's something we still uh, are struggling in the region. And uh, there are this challenge of uh, it's not a homogeneous process, so inside the country there are still some areas where MDGs are not achieved equally in the, in the, as the other uh, regions. So we need to continue work on that and actually in the SDGs, some of these MDGs are, con are still there and will continue to be one of the uh, global development objectives and targets. And, and what, is, uh, what are we doing, what is the Pan American Health Organization doing regarding the new Sustainable Development Goals? So for the MDGs we prepare a report, yeah. this is a report, so actually it was a joint project and uh, we have uh, you know, all this, uh, what is being achieved on the MDGs and this is very important. The other thing we did is uh, we make an analysis and, uh, and compare what uh, what is existing already in PAHO in our in our system? So what is already planned, budget, and uh, and uh, is in implementation country level, and uh, and compare that to what is the new SDGs, and the the result was quite uh, enthusiastic and quite positive. Mm -hmm. So we really are well prepared for all the new SDG on health, the SDG three and it's nine targets and four means of implementation. We have mandates, we have uh, activities, we have the strategies, we have technical programs in all of them. So we are very well prepared. And now we ask countries, and the, actually our director, Dr. Carice Etienne, sent a specific letter for the Ministry of Health asking them to have a regional consulta uh, national consultation to discuss this and get prepared for January 1st, mm -hmm. when the SDG starts. SDGs is different from MDGs, it's a much more ambitious goal, it's a much more ambitious initiative. But actually, I was in New York last, uh, last week and I see so much enthusiasm, so much interest. So I think it'll be another important well, I'm, I'm milestone. Glad, I'm glad you mentioned that, because I was going to ask you, you were just in New York for the uh, UN General Assembly yes. last week, and what is it you heard, what did you see, any surprises, anything that you thought were um, the things that, we, that might change our thinking or support our thinking? I think there are two, uh, three, maybe I can mention three important things, there are many, but yeah. the three I can... Uh, the first is uh, see in reality a process that is driven by member states. Sure. So we see that the secretary there is really supporting, but this, the member states is taking the initiative and uh, pushing forward this, uh, this sustainable development goal. It's nothing, it's real. It's big, it's real, and it's very, uh, people are very enthusiastic, maybe more than the MDGs, sure. because that's a fact much more, is a much more uh, looking forward, a better world, and all that. Second is the the implementation. So now, and nobody wants to talk more about what is this or not. Mm -hmm. Really, the focus now is how to implement it. Sure. And uh, one, uh, there are many sessions I participate where they actually 
reviewing what is already being done in the countries in advance. Just an example, in our region, Colombia already made the, the national plan sustainable. Mm -hmm. So they are already implemented far, far more than others. So it's, uh, and there are good examples of there. So we see other examples like Sweden. You know, one of the meetings also talk about that. The, the Queen of Sweden actually called many presidents and signed a declaration to support the implementation. And uh, we have the president of Colombia, the president of Brazil, and Trinidad and Tobago signed together. So it's the uh, region is present there, and the uh, others is now going forward. Mm -hmm. The third uh, I want to mention is the challenge of measuring and monitoring sure. this. So uh, we do have a, a process, ongoing process that started actually a long time ago, and go until March next year to establish the indicators. And the indicators how we measure all these uh, enormous challenges, 169 targets. So, mm -hmm. how you measure that and how you measure the impact of that inequity. And that mm -hmm. would be the big challenge I had. Well, that was again leads to the next question in terms of uh, what tools do we have to facilitate this process? So, are you going to, with, in terms of measuring, are you going to have benchmarks during the next 15 years to kind of uh, at different points along the way? between now and 2030 to, to really look at how, yeah. whether it's successful or not? We don't know exactly because this process is going to the until March n next year right. to really establish the details. But what's clear now is the way they approve the, the SDGs right. need to make sense for countries. Sure. So it's, uh, I saw uh, an example interesting. It's like uh, before in MDG you have like a mozzarella pizza. So everything is the same sure. and we compare the same. Sure. Now, each country will pick which is important for them. Sure. So it's like a mixed pizza. So you have several slices. Yeah. One is, uh, have, uh, is a Hawaiian, the other yeah. is a Calabresa. Yeah. And then you need to see you know, how you compare this slice yeah. in terms of uh, how integrity, yeah. the integrity of it, each slice. So yeah. it's a total different process. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, will be the, the idea, of course, is like it was in MDG. Yeah. Every five years, you know, have it stop sure. and look forward sure. how we can improve that. But there are big methodological challenges. Ahead. Well, now you're making me hungry thinking about SDGs. You know, <laughs> I didn't think that that could make that correlation, but you know, that's uh... actually one of the most important SDG is on nutrition. Dr. Etienne was in New York actually addressing sure. it as a big, uh, you know, big audience, and sure. she was. Uh, making the case as how important is uh, on the link between health sure. MDG, SDG and the others SDG, sure. particulars, sure. you know, those with nutrition, yeah. poverty, climate yeah. change and others. Sure. Great. Well, Guto, um, thank you very much for this explanation on, on SDGs and MDGs and I know we have a lot of, a lot of work ahead of us uh, during the next few years, uh, the next 15 years to be exact, but certainly between now and March. And uh, you've been a great, uh, great asset in helping us get there so far. And looking forward to continuing working with you on this. Thank you very much for the audience, and uh, we are ready to go. <laughs>